Well, good morning and thank you for joining me for this time of morning prayer on Friday. I'm going to listen to a piece of Teze again this morning. And this one is called Ube Caritas, um, where charity and love are, there God is. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we awake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, 
a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. For the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Judges, chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull, the second bull seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father, and cut down the sacred pole that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here, in proper order. Then take the second bull, and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the sacred pole that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants, and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the townspeople to do it by day, he did it by night. When the townspeople rose early in the morning, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the sacred pole beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. And so they said to one another, Who has done this? After searching and inquiring, they were told Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Then the townspeople said to Joash, Bring out your son, so that he may die, for he has pulled down the altar of Baal and cut down the sacred pole beside it. But Joash said to all the people who were arrayed against him, Will you contend for Baal? Will you defend his cause? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been pulled down. Therefore on that day Gideon was called Jeru Baal, that is, let Baal contend against him, because he pulled down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came together, and crossing the Jordan they encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord took possession of Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet and the Aborizites came, who were called out to follow him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they too were called out to follow him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, and they went up to meet them. Then Gideon said to God, In order to see whether you will deliver Israel by my hand as you have said, I am going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on the ground, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water. Then Gilead said to God, 
Do not let your anger burn against me. Let me speak one more time. Let me please make trial with the fleece just one more time. Let it be dry only on the fleece, and on the ground let there be dew. And God did it that night. It was dry on the fleece only, and all the ground there was dew. Today's canticle is called A Song of God's Glory. The earth is the Lord and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. For who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have brought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you have ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who are invited will taste my dinner. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, rejoicing in your blessings and trusting in your loving care for all, we bring to you this morning our prayers for the world, the church and ourselves. We pray this day, Lord, for the created world, for those who rebuild where things have been destroyed, for those who fight hunger, poverty and disease. For those who are working to bring relief and aid to refugees and those fleeing from war, drought and famine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our nation, for those who have authority and influence in our national life. We pray for those who keep peace and who foster mutual understanding and respect. We pray for those who teach, who heal and care, and all who give of themselves freely in the service of others. May we all, Lord, be sensitive to what is right and good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day, Father, we pray for people in need, those for whom life at times is a struggle, those whose lives are clouded by fear, anxiety, distress, pain, disability or discouragement and fear. Lord, may these people know the warmth, the comfort and the assurance of your love always, that they may go forward in their lives with confidence and trust. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your church throughout the world, with all its diversity and differing challenges. We pray, Lord, for vicars, priests, ministers throughout your church, Lord, facing the difficult decision of when to open their churches again for public worship. Help us, Lord, to be guided by your Spirit. Help us, Lord, to work and to witness together, surrounded by that great company of heaven. We pray, Lord, especially for those at St Mary's and St James. Lord, give us strength for all that we seek to be and to do. And we pray especially this day, Lord, for Penny and Andrew Hinton. We pray for Joe Wisdom. We 
pray for Debbie Rastel. We pray for Colin, for Ben. For Elizabeth and James. For Charlotte. We pray for John. We pray for Pookie. Lord, every single person that you have made has been made in your image and you love us with an everlasting love. May each one of us, Lord, who are seeking to know you, experience that love afresh this day as we pray. Help us, Lord, in all the opportunities of our lives to share that love with others, that they too may know Jesus as their Lord, their Saviour and their friend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you are the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. And we remember before you those who have died and those whose anniversary of death fall at this time. Lord, you turn our deepest darkness into the brightest of light. For in your light, we shall see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.